Elliot from the Bear Pit TV, Hello Stoke fans, it's time for an episode of SCFC News now. Since last time we spoke, a lot's happened. Obviously it was a transfer window, I've just about recovered from deadline day. Thank you to everyone who did go and watch the Bull Street live stream because it was a pretty incredible and grueling experience being live for nine hours on the internet. But finally recovered so it's time to do a video. We'll start off with some news that isn't related to transfers and it's some absolutely heartbreaking news. And it's that Jack Butland is going to be out for two months, is the original report. But apparently it could be up to ten weeks in some more reports that have come out today. Um, it's absolutely devastating. Our best keeper, it seems like we're going into the season again with injuries after we had a torrid time with them last season. You know, it'd just be nice to have a break. A break of luck or just have everyone fit for a game. It'd be absolutely madness. If you believe in other reports as well, that Shakira could be out for six weeks. God knows, it, absolutely God knows, but hopefully he makes a full recovery and we don't have him out for the rest of the season or we don't have him out again and that's it. Um, but So leading on from Jack out, we'll go on to transfers in uh, and the first one, which was a bit of a strange one of the day, was Lee Grant on loan from Derby, the goalkeeper. Um, and obviously the club knew about Jack's injury and how serious it was and this is why they got him in. And uh, there's a few people who thought he looked like Fabian Dalf when he first came to the training ground. But it wasn't, it was Lee Grant from Derby. Now, I can't say I've watched this guy play much. The only thing I have seen is this clip that was floating about the internet. That doesn't fill me with too much confidence. Hopefully he's better and it's just a one-off. It was just one mistake. Everyone makes mistakes now and then. Um, the second move of the day was Bruno Martins Indy from Porto, centre-back. Big and strong. He did well at the World Cup in 2014 and rose to prominence there under a Louis van Gaal Netherlands side. And there was even uh, rumours of him being to go to United with Louis van Gaal when he first joined. Never happened. Uh, he's at Porto now. He's joining us on loan. And, you know, he's the sort of centre-back that I think we need. We need a new partner for Ryan. We need a consistent partner for Ryan. And one of the most shocking things about this transfer is that he's 24 years old. Looks about 35 to me. <laughs> but apparently he's 24. Apparently, uh, allegedly, is probably the correct word I should use. But we got Bruno Martins Indy, uh, Lee Grant, and then the other last transfer that we got was Wilfred Boney on loan, which left me, you know, feeling like this. Now, for me, Wilfred Boney is the piece of the missing jigsaw, stokey puzzle that we're waiting for. We've needed this striker, we've needed a finisher, someone who can put away the goals, someone you'd expect to put away the goals. He's one of those strikers that you, when you start him every game, I know he didn't get the best of runs at Man City, but who would with Aguero keeping them outside? But when he did, like for Swansea, he was on absolute fire. Um, and he's someone who's gonna put away the goals for us. I know we had uh, Mitch Adams, who also known as Pessimistic Stokey, which sort of uh, explains his negativity. He wrote to me saying that there's no chances for him to put away. We're not creating any chances for him to put away. Listen, have faith. He's the, the missing part of the puzzle. The attacking midfielders are all going to link up with him. It's going to be absolutely fine. He's a minimum of 10 goals this season. Minimum. That's the kind of striker he is. I've got faith in that. Someone clip this video and turn it into a vine and play it when he scores two and use it against me at the end of the season. But I'm, I've got faith. I've got faith. So Wilfred Boney, big signing. He's on loan. Don't believe there's an option to buy. And in January, there's a little thing called the African Cup of Nations. Now, we've got Mama Biram Juf and Wilfred Boney. They both play for African sides internationally. Does that mean we're going to be two strikers down in January? Hopefully not. Hopefully they don't even qualify. I don't know this is much of the situation about African Cup of Nations. It's very much an overlooked tournament by um, us a lot in, over in England, we don't really watch it or anything along those lines unless one of our players is involved. We may have two, we may have two of them involved. God knows, I don't know the situation with that. Maybe we're going to go in for another strike in January, maybe we'll finally get Berahino. Which does lead me on to the last thing, Berahino never came, it never happened, he's still in Tony Pulis' basement. <laughs> Allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> it's a word I've had to use too many times in this video. He's allegedly in Tony Pulis's basement with him there laughing. But that deal never came through. It's believed that the player wanted to join and West Brom just denied the move, blocked the move. And funnily enough, 
TP is already in some sort of war with West Brom about how he didn't have much reign over transfers or control. So yeah, there's a bit of unrest at West Brom over that situation, which is probably deserved for you know keeping us in suspense for a transfer that never happened. But uh, but City Berahino now will probably go for free next summer. I'm sure we'll go in again. Apparently Mark Hughes will go for him again. Um, I'd just like him to leave West Brom in any shape or form, really, um, and just get out of there. I don't want to hear about him much anymore, but I'm sure we probably will all January and all summer until he does move somewhere. And then we've also got the outs. So two people left us. Uh, we had Joss Lully for Deportivo on loan. Uh, he never had a fair run in the side for me. I know a lot of people are saying that he wasn't he wasn't very good, but for me, you need a run in the side, you need time to gel, and I don't think he had a run of four or five games, in, in, in all I can remember. I don't think he got that run at all in Mark Hughes' side, but it seems he's not fancied anymore. We've had Wilfred Brony in his place. Joss, Joss Lou does, however, leave me with one of my most favourite memories in football. <laughs> Yeah, that is me laughing my head off on the clip. Um, I just can't get over when he ordered the ref. It was absolutely brilliant. And then, funnily enough, this season they've introduced a rule so he can't touch the ref. I wonder if Joss Lou single-handedly enforced that rule. Uh, and then we also had Philip Walsh, I believe. Someone who split Stoke fans right down the middle, 50-50. Hate him, love him. He's like a pot of Marmite. And he has left for Wolfsburg on loan. Uh, there's an option for them to buy, which I believe is £5 million which is pretty cheap. I think he should be a little more than that, even though some people don't rate him. I think he should be more, or we should get more for a, a midfielder, a midfielder, a defender who's now gone to a side who's usually in the Champions League. They're not anymore, they're not at the minute, but. And just like Jocelyn, Walsh I left us with a brilliant little vine. Shut the fuck up, you bitch. So that is all your SCFC news. We've had transfers, we've got the bloody Jack Butland injury situation, which I hope, you know, he makes some magical recovery and he's back in a month. You never know. I've seen stranger things happen, you know, like Sammy Bangora slip off the face of the earth. But anyway, it's the international break this weekend. And for once, it's come at a good time. We needed the international break, in all fairness, to get ourselves together. Usually it disrupts when we're having a good period, but it's come at the right time. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you have. Let me know in the Comments below if you think it was right to get rid of Jocelyn Walshide, because I know a lot of you feel strongly about that sort of thing. Subscribe if you're new, and thank you for watching.